The French section of the Workers' International French, Section Française de l'Internationale Ouvrière, SFIO was a French Socialist Party founded in 1905 and replaced in 1969 by the current Socialist Party PS. It was created during the 1905 Globe Congress in Paris as a merger between the French Socialist Party and the Socialist Party of France in order to create the French section of the Second International, designated as the Party of the Workers' Movement. The SFIO was led by Jules Guesté, Jean Jaurès who quickly became its most influential figure, Édouard Vaillant and Paul Lafargue and united the Marxist tendency represented by Guesté with the social democratic tendency represented by Jaurès. The SFIO opposed itself to colonialism and to militarism, although it abandoned its anti-militarist views and supported the National Union government Union Nationale facing Germany's declaration of war on France in World War I. Having replaced internationalist class struggle with patriotism like the whole Second International and because of conflicting views towards the 1917 Russian Revolution and the Bolshevik-led Third International, the SFIO split into two groups during the 1920 Tours Congress as the majority created the Section Française de l'Internationale Communiste SFIC, which joined the Third International and became the French Communist Party while the minority continued as the SFIO. Topic. Background After the failure of the Paris Commune 1871, French socialism was severely weakened. Its leaders died or were exiled. In 1879, during the Marseille Congress, workers' associations created the Federation of the Socialist Workers of France FTSF. However, three years later, Jules Guesté and Paul Lafargue the son-in-law of Karl Marx left the Federation, which they considered too moderate, and founded the French Workers' Party POF. The FTSF, led by Paul Bruce, was defined as «possibilist» because it advocated gradual reforms, whereas the POF promoted Marxism. At the same time, Édouard Vaillant and the heirs of Louis-Auguste Blanqui founded the Central Revolutionary Committee CRC, which represented the French revolutionary tradition. In the 1880s, the socialists knew their first electoral success, winning control of some municipalities. Jean Alamein and some FTSF members criticized the focus on electoral goals. In 1890, they created the Revolutionary Socialist Workers' Party POSR. Their main objective was to win power through the tactic of the general strike. Besides these groups, some politicians declared themselves as independent socialists outside of the political parties. They tended to have moderate opinions. In the 1890s, the Dreyfus Affair caused debate in the socialist movement. For Jules Guesté, the socialists should not intervene in an internal conflict of the bourgeoisie. In Jean Yaurès's opinion, the socialist movement was a part of the republican movement and needed to take part in the struggle in order to defend republican values. In 1899, another debate polarized the socialist groups regarding the participation of Alexander Millerand in Pierre Waldeck Rousseau's cabinet, which included the Marquis de Galifet, best known for having directed the bloody repression during the Paris Commune. Furthermore, the participation in a «bourgeois government» sparked a controversy pitting Jules Guesté against Jean Jaurès. In 1902, Guesté and Vaillant founded the Socialist Party of France, while Jaurès, Alamein and the Possibilists formed the French Socialist Party. In 1905, during the Globe Congress, under pressure from the Second International, the two groups merged into the French section of the Workers' International SFIO. Foundation and early years The new SFIO party was hemmed between the middle-class liberals of the Radical Party and the revolutionary syndicalists who dominated the trade unions. The General Confederation of Labour proclaimed its independence from political parties at this time and the non-distinction between political and industrial aims. In addition, some CGT members refused to join the SFIO, because they considered it extremist. They created the Republican Socialist Party PRS. In contrast to other European socialist parties, the SFIO was a decentralized organization. Its national and executive institutions were weakened by the strong autonomy of its members and local levels of the party. 
Consequently, the function of Secretary General, held by Louis Dubroy until 1918, was essentially administrative and the real political leader was Jean Jaurès, president of the parliamentary group and director of the party paper La Humanité. Unlike the PRS, SFIO members did not participate in left bloc governments, although they supported a part of its policy, notably the laicité, based on the 1905 Act of Separation between Church and State. However, they criticized the ferocious repression of strikes by radical Prime Minister Georges Clemenceau after 1906, following the creation of a Minister of Labour, a post held by PRS leader René Viviani. During the July 1914 international crisis, the party was ideologically torn between its membership in the Socialist International and the wave of patriotism within France. The assassination of Jaurès, on 31 July 1914, was a setback for the pacifist wing of the party and contributed to the massive increase in support for the wartime government of national unity. Participation in World War I caused divisions within the party, which were accentuated after 1917. Furthermore, internal disagreements appeared about the 1917 October Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. In 1919, the anti-war socialists were heavily defeated in elections by the National Bloc Coalition which played on the middle class's fear of Bolshevism posters with a Bolshevik with a knife between his teeth were used to discredit the socialist movement. The Bloc National won 70% of the seats, forming what became known as the Chambre Blue Horizon. Blue Horizon Chamber. Communist split and popular front On 25 December 1920, during the Tours Congress, a majority of SFIO members voted to join the Comintern also known as the Third International, created by the Bolsheviks after the 1917 October Revolution. Led by Boris Souverin and Ludovic Frossard, they created the French section of the Communist International SFIC. Another smaller group also favored membership in the Comintern, but not all 21 conditions, and the minority, led by Léon Blum and the majority of the socialists' elected members, decided to in Blum's words, keep the old house, and remain within the Second International. Marcel Sembat, Léon Blum and Albert Thomas refused to align themselves with Moscow. Paul Faure became Secretary General of the SFIO, but its most influential figure was Bloom, leader of the parliamentary group and director of a new party paper Le Populaire. The previous party paper, La Humanité, was controlled by the founders of the SFIC. However, Frossard later resigned from the SFIC and rejoined the SFIO in January 1923. One year after the Tours Congress, the CGT trade union made the same split. Those who became communists created the United General Confederation of Labour (CGTU), which fused again with the CGT in 1936 during the Popular Front government. Léon Jaoua was CGT's main leader until 1947, and the new split leading to the creation of the Reformist Union Confederation Workers' Force (CGT Foe). In 1924 and in 1932, the socialists joined with the radicals in the Cartel des Gaches coalition. They supported the government led by radical Édouard Harriet (1924–1926–1932), but they didn't participate. The first cartel saw the right wing terrorized, and capital flight destabilized the government, while the divided radicals didn't all support their socialist allies. The monetary crisis, also due to the refusal of Germany to pay the World War I reparations, caused parliamentary instability. Edouard Harriet, Paul Painlevé and Aristide Bryan succeeded each other as Prime Minister until 1926, when the French political right came back to power with Raymond Poincaré. The newly elected communist deputies also opposed the first cartel, refusing to support «bourgeois» governments. The second cartel acceded to power in 1932, but this time, the SFIO only gave their support without the participation of the radicals, which allied themselves with right-wing radicals. After years of internal feuds the reformist wing of the party, led by Marcel Déa and Pierre Renaudel, split from the SFIO in November 1933 to form a neo-socialist movement, and merged with the PRS into form the Socialist Republican Union USR. The cartel was again the victim of parliamentary instability, while various scandals led to the 6 February 1934 riots organized by far-right leagues. Radical Édouard Daladier resigned on the next day, handing out the power to conservative Gaston Domergue. 
It was the first time during the Third Republic 1871 to 1940 that a government had to resign because of street pressure. Following the 6 February 1934 crisis, which the whole of the socialist movement saw as a fascist conspiracy to overthrow the Republic, a goal pursued by the Royalist Action Française and other far-right leagues, anti-fascist organizations were created. The French Communist Party PCF, supported by the Comintern's abandoning of the «social fascism» directives in favor of «united front» directives, got closer to the SFIO, the USR and the Radical Party, to form the coalition that would win the 1936 elections and bring about the Popular Front. In June 1934, Leon Trotsky proposed the «French turn» into the SFIO, which is where the entrism strategy takes its origins from. The Trotskyist Communist Leagues the French section of the international left opposition leaders were divided over the issue of entering the SFIO. Raymond Molinier was the most supportive of Trotsky's proposal, while Pierre Neville was opposed to it and Pierre Franck remained ambivalent. The League finally voted to dissolve into the SFIO in August 1934, where they formed the Bolshevik Leninist Group Group Bolshevik Leninist, GBL. At the Malouz Party Congress of June 1935, the Trotskyists led a campaign to prevent the United Front from expanding into a «popular front», which would include the Liberal Radical Party. However, the Popular Front strategy was adopted and, in the 1936 election, the coalition gained a majority and, for the first time, the SFIO obtained more votes and seats than the Radical Party. Léon Blum became France's first socialist prime minister in 1936, while the PCF supported, without participation, his government. A general strike applauded the socialists' victory, while Marceau Pavert cried, "'Tout est possible. Everything is possible.'" Pavert would later split and create the Workers' and Peasants' Socialist Party PSOP. .Historian Daniel Guerin was also a member of the latter. Trotsky advised the GBL to break with the SFIO, leading to a confused departure by the Trotskyists from the Socialist Party in early 1936, which drew only about 600 people from the party. The 1936 Matignon Accords set up collective bargaining, and removed all obstacles to union organization. The terms included a blanket 7-12% wage increase, and allowed for paid vacation two weeks and a 40-hour work week. The eight-hour day had been established following the 1914–18 War of Attrition and its mobilization of industrial capacities. Within a year, however, Bloom's government collapsed over economic policy as during the Cartel des Gotches, capital flight was an issue, giving rise to the so-called myth of the 200 hundreds families in the context of the Great Depression, and also over the issue of the Spanish Civil War. The demoralized left fell apart and was unable to resist the collapse of the Third Republic after the military defeat of 1940 during World War II. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> World War II. A number of SFIO members were part of the Vichy 80 who refused to vote extraordinary powers to Marshal Philippe Payton in July 1940, following which the latter proclaimed the Revolution Nationale Reactionary Program and the establishment of the Vichy regime. Although some engaged in collaborationism an important part also took part in the resistance. Pierre Forco created with Félix Guin the Brutus Network, in which Gaston Defer, later mayor of Marseille for years, participated, along with Daniel Mayer. In 1942–43, Peyton's regime judged the Third Republic by organizing a public trial, the Riome trial, of personalities accused of having «caused» the defeat of France. They included Léon Blum, the radical Édouard Daladier, the conservatives Paul Reynaud and Georges Mandel, etc. At the same time, Marcel Déa and some neo-socialists who had split from the SFIO in 1933, participated to the Vichy regime and supported Peyton's policy of collaboration. Paul Faure, secretary-general of the SFIO from 1920 to 1940, approved of this policy too. He was excluded from the party when it was reconstituted in 1944. In total, 14 of the 17 SFIO ministers who had been in government before the war were expelled for collaboration. Fourth Republic 
After the liberation of France in 1944, while the PCF became the largest left-wing party, the project to create a labor-based political party rallying the non-communist resistance failed in due to the disagreements opposing notably the socialists and the Christian Democrats about laicite, and the conflict with Charles de Gaulle about the new organization of the institutions parliamentary system or presidential government. The SFIO re-emerged and participated in the Three Parties Alliance with the PCF and the Christian Democratic Popular Republican Movement This coalition led the social policy inspired by National Council of Resistance's program, installing the main elements of the French welfare state, nationalizing banks and some industrial companies. While serving in government during the 40s, the SFIO was partly responsible for setting up the welfare state institutions of the liberation period and helping to bring about France's economic recovery. In May 1946, the socialist-led government of Félix Guin passed a law that generalized social security, making it obligatory for the whole population. A number of progressive reforms were also introduced during Paul Ramadier's tenure as Prime Minister in 1947, including the extension of social security to government workers, the introduction of a national minimum wage, and the granting from April 1947 onwards of allowances to all aged persons in need. Various measures were also introduced during the SFIO's time in office to improve health and safety in the workplace. An order of July 1947 prescribed the installation of showers for the use of staff employed on dirty or unhealthy work, and a decree of August 1947 indicated the special precautions to be taken to protect workers spraying paint or varnish. An order of 10 September 1947 laid down the terms in which warnings must be given of the dangers of benzene poisoning, while a circular of October 1947 indicated how such poisoning can be prevented. In addition, a decree of August 1947 instituted the original measures on health and safety committees. During the years of the Fourth Republic, the SFIO was also active in pressing for changes in areas such as education and agriculture. Through the efforts of the SFIO, a comprehensive farm law was passed in 1946 which provided that sharecroppers had the right to renew their options at the expiration of their leaseholds and that the owner could repossess the land only if he or his children worked it. In addition, sharecroppers could acquire ownership at low interest rates, while those who were forced to leave the land obtained compensation for the improvements that they made on the land. The sharecroppers also had the right to join a marketing cooperative, while their conflicts with owners were to be resolved at arbitration tribunals to which both sides elected an equal number of representatives. In the early years of the Fourth Republic, the SFIO played an instrumental role in securing appropriations for 1,000 additional state elementary school teachers and in bringing in bills to extend the national laic school system to kindergarten and nursery school levels. In spring 1946, the SFIO reluctantly supported the Constitution plans of the Communist Party. They were rejected by referendum. The party supported the second proposal, prepared with the PCF and the MRP, and it was approved in October 1946. However, the coalition split in May 1947. Because of the Cold War, the Communist ministers were excluded from the cabinet led by Socialist Paul Ramadier. Anti-communism prevented the French left from forming a united front. The Communists had taken control of the General Confederation of Labor CGT Union. This was relatively weakened by the 1948 creation of a Social Democratic Trade Union Workers' Force which was supported by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. This split was led by former CGT Secretary General Leon Jaouo, who was granted the Nobel Peace Prize three years later. Teachers Union Federation for National Education, FEN, chosen to gain autonomy towards the two confederations in order to conserve its unity. But socialist syndicalists took the control of the FEN, which became the main training ground of the SFIO party. A third force coalition was constituted by center-right and center-left parties, including the SFIO, in order to block the opposition of the communists on the one hand, and of the Gaullists on the other. Besides, in spite of Léon Blum's support, the party leader Daniel Mayer was defeated in aid of Guy Mollet. If the new secretary-general was supported by the left wing of the party, he was very hostile to any form of alliance with the PCF. He said, The Communist Party is not on the left but in the east. At the beginning of the 1950s, the disagreements with its governmental partners about denominational schools and the colonial problem explained a more critical attitude of the SFIO membership. 
In 1954, the party was deeply divided about the European defence community. Against the instructions of the party lead, the half of the parliamentary group voted against the project, and contributed to its failure. Progressively, the Algerian War of Independence became the major issue of the political debate. During the 1956 legislative campaign, the party took part in the Republican Front, a center-left coalition led by radical Pierre Mendes France, who advocated a peaceful resolution of the conflict. Guy Mollet took the lead of the cabinet but led a very repressive policy. After the May 1958 crisis, he supported the return of Charles de Gaulle and the establishment of the Fifth Republic. Moreover, the SFIO was divided about the repressive policy of Guy Mollet in Algeria and his support to de Gaulle's return. If the party returned in opposition in 1959, it couldn't prevent the constitution of another unified socialist party PSU, in 1960, joined the next year by Pierre Mendes France, who was trying to anchor the radical party amongst the left-wing movement and opposed the colonial wars. Decline The SFIO received its lowest vote in the 1960s. It was discredited by the contradictory policies of its leaders during the Fourth Republic. Youth and the intellectual circles preferred the PSU and workers the PCF. The Fifth Republic's constitution had been tailored by Charles de Gaulle to satisfy his needs, and his Gaullism managed to gather enough people from the left and the right to govern without the other party's help. Furthermore, the SFIO hesitated between allying with the non-Gaullist centre-right as advocated by Gaston Defer and reconciliation with the Communists. Mollet refused to choose. The SFIO supported François Mitterrand to the 1965 presidential election even if he was not a member of the party. The SFIO and the Radicals then created the Federation of the Democratic and Socialist Left FGDS, a centre-left coalition led by Mitterrand. It split after May 1968 and the electoral disaster of June 1968. Defer was the SFIO candidate in the 1969 presidential election. He was eliminated in the first round, with only 5% of votes. One month later, at the Issy Les Moulineaux Congress, the SFIO was refounded as the modern day Socialist Party. Mollet passed on the leadership to Alain Savary. Africa The SFIO suffered a split in Senegal in 1934 as Lamine Gay broke away and formed the Senegalese Socialist Party PSS. However, as the Senegalese Popular Front Committee is formed, PSS and the SFIO branch cooperated. In 1937 a joint list of SFIO and PSS won the municipal elections in St. Louis. Maitre Vidal became mayor of the town. The Congress of PSS held 4–5 June 1938 decided to reunify with SFIO. Following that decision, on 11–12 June 1938 a Congress of the new Federation of SFIO was held in Tees. In 1948 Leopold Seder Senghor broke away from the Senegalese Federation of SFIO, and formed the Senegalese Democratic Bloc BDS. During the 1951 National Assembly election campaign, violence broke out between BDS and SFIO activists. In the end BDS won both seats allocated to Senegal. In 1956 another SFIO splinter group appeared in Senegal, the Socialist Movement of the Senegalese Union. In 1957 the history of SFIO in West Africa came to an end. The federations of SFIO in Cameroon, Chad, Moyen Congo, Sudan, Gabon, Guinea, Niger, Ubangi Chari, and Senegal all met in Conakry from the 11th of January to the 13th of January 1957. At that meeting it was decided that the African federations would break with their French parent organization and form the African Socialist Movement MSA, an independent pan-African party. The Senegalese section of MSA was the Senegalese Party of Socialist Action PSAS, and it was led by Lamine Gay. The first meeting of the leading committee of MSA met in Dakar from 9 February to 10 February the same year. Two SFIO delegates attended the session. <laughs> General secretaries Louis Dubroy 1905-1918 
Ludovic Oscar Frossard (1918–1920), Paul Fauré (1920–1940), Daniel Mayer (1943–1946), Guy Mollet (1946–1969). Topic: Election results. 1906 to 9.95%. 1910 to 13.23%. 1914 to 16.76%. 1919 to 21.22%. 1924 to 20.16%. 1928 to 18.05%, 1932 to 20.51%, 1936 to 19.86%, 1945 to 23.45%, June 1946 21.14%, November 1946 17.9%. 1951 to 15.39%, 1956 to 14.93%, 1958 to 15.5%, 1962 to 12.5%, 1965 presidential 31.72%, 44.8% in runoff, common FGDS PCF radical candidacy. 1967 to 19 percent result of the FGDS, including other left-wing parties. 1968 to 16.5 percent result of the FGDS, including other left-wing parties. 1969 presidential 5.01 percent. Topic. See also. French Socialist Party History of Socialism History of the Left in France Tunis Socialist Topic Footnotes Topic Further reading D A McGibbon French Socialism Today Journal of Political Economy, Part 1, Volume 19, Number 1, January 1911, pp. 36 to 46. Part 2, Volume 19, Number 2, February 1911, pp. 98 to 110. Part 1 and Part 2 in JSTOR.